I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. Again. How are you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast Season 5. I'm your host, Nostrada Ben, and I host this episode with my partner, Johnny D. Hey, come on. So, uh, how's it going, my friend, today? Yeah, fine, and you? Yes, I'm going super great. And you want, you know what? Uh, the color green. Yes, yeah, so we have another uh, wrestling guest. I'm talking about the former IWS Canadian Championship. The uh, former IWS Tag Team Championship two times and also IWS World Heavyweight Championship for three times. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the Green Phantom. Hey, how you doing? Get with the green, baby. Yeah, we're going super great. Uh, Thank you so much for um, participating on our show. Uh, we know that you are very busy, and we know that recently um, uh, you did a big trip uh, to Japan, and we will uh, talk about uh, that. So uh, go ahead with the first question, my friend. Uh, okay, me, Mr. Phantom, uh, you are a teacher by day and the Green Phantom by night. Can you explain to us how your students perceive you? They think I'm the coolest thing going, man. I mean, uh, what other teacher has a green beard? You know, they see me walk in the room. Uh, I, I have a lot of energy, a lot of charisma naturally. So uh, it just makes my job easier, honestly. Nice. And um, I know you since uh, many years, probably uh, 20 years, because I remember you were backstage with a good friends of you, uh, PCP and Manny. And if my memory is good, the first time I met you, it was for the CCW uh, 2002, 2002. by uh, Kevin Martell and Sonny Warcloud. Sonny Warcloud. Yeah, nice it's, been, it's been a while, my friend. So uh, we would like uh, to hear you about what inspired you to become a professional wrestler. Make <laughs> uh, when I was a little kid, uh, yeah. you know, Hulk Hogan was the thing, you know, and uh, just seeing that that big character, you know, the the the, the just the, the, the larger than lifeness of wrestling, mm-hmm. I just uh, I fell in love with it right away. I, I can't tell you specifically what got me hooked on wrestling, just all of it, you know, I loved it, but, nice. but I never, but, but I never knew that. I never saw that I, that I could be a, a wrestler, you know, like because I played football and rugby and no. hockey and, and whatnot, and I saw what you had to do to make the NHL or make the NFL or the CFL. Mm-hmm. But I, I never saw that for wrestling. There wasn't any okay. schools, at least that I knew of, and stuff. So uh, I, I didn't get into wrestling physically until until I was about twenty three years old. Wow! So I, 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 I'm kind of a late bloomer. <laughs> really. Okay, uh, you played the uh, rugby in Verdun for the Montreal Irish. How many yeah. years have you, how many years have you been playing rugby, and how did you get the started uh, that discipline? <laughs> well, I mean, I I just love uh, I love sports in general. You know, like okay. I've, I've been playing hockey my whole life. I've been playing football my whole life, and as you get older, uh, there's no place really, really, anyways, to to play football like contact football as you get older. But mm-hmm. rugby. Uh, you can, you can play into your, I mean, people think it's crazy when you're older people playing rugby because they just don't understand the game. There's a lot of respect that comes with it. And um, because of that respect and the culture around it, I was able to join rugby. And of course, I mean, it, it was destiny because I, I, a friend of mine is like, hey, uh, why don't you come play rugby? I'm like, what's your team name? They're like, oh, it's the Montreal Irish. 
so that's green already. And then I found a real, uh, real their slogan is "Go Green." So I'm like, well, of course I got to join this team. You know, this is I was meant to be. And uh, and and as soon as I joined, we started winning championships. I'm not saying it's all because of me, but uh, I, I, I've enjoyed a tremendous success on the rugby team. Uh, the Montreal Irish is the premier uh, rugby club in 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 Quebec. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just a, a great thing. I'm still part of that club. You know? uh, can you explain your fascination uh, for the wrestling mask and how uh, the Green Phantom became a part of your life? <laughs> that's, that's a long, <laughs> that's a long answer. Long story. <laughs> um, well, I'll, I'll tell you this straight up. I, I never picked the mask. I never picked green. It always picked me. Right. Uh, I, I always liked masked wrestlers as a, as a kid, for sure. I, I always found it cool, you know. But uh, mm -hmm. as far as the mask goes, I was, uh, I was, uh, I, I, I had a girlfriend who bought me a, a green wrestling mask. I, I wasn't, okay. I, I wasn't a wrestler yet. Uh, but okay. I, 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 so I, I, I heard of this radio show. They were talking about uh, this crazy wrestling show. You got to come see it. So of course, I went to see it. It happened to be Halloween. Because <laughs> it was Halloween, because it was Halloween, I, I put the, the mask that my girlfriend got me. She got me okay. a green mask. She could have got me any any color ever, uh, especially since at the time my favorite color was blue. But no, she got me a green mask. And, <laughs> I, and, and I went to this show and I loved it so much. I, I, I recognized Manny from when I was a kid, and right away I started getting trained. The next wrestling show, people canceled. And they're like, "Oh, can you fill in?" I'm like, "I've only been training for a couple of months." But sure, what's my gimmick? Oh, here's a green mask that I wore, right? And uh, and, and, and even after, after the Halloween show, when, when I was wearing that green mask, because uh, I was such a, a big guy already, people thought that I might be part of that show. Uh, so much so that on a, on a radio show the next night, they were talking about the show, and they're like, oh, this guy, he, he looked like he was going to be part of the show. Is the green mask guy going to be part in the future? So I call up, being a shit disturber, I'm like, yeah, this guy's crazy. He's gonna kill everyone. He's a ma maniac. And they're like, well, what's his name? And I didn't think of it until then. I'm like, uh, 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 uh Green Phantom, <laughs> you know? So, so the, the universe did that. I, I didn't really choose okay. that. And then, uh, and it was just, it's that was history. And I've been stuck with it ever since. Sometimes I didn't like it. I thought it was a bit hokey. Uh, so your first spin, say, come no. They, yeah. uh, over time, I've, I've come to realize it and, and realize it's my destiny and I've evolved tremendously within green and green phantom. And, uh, I wouldn't have any other, any other way, honestly. So the mask choose you and not, uh, Leves. So do I, my friend. Yeah. How, how many months did the uh, Anthony Tonin, AKA TNT train you before you were ready to wrestle in front of crowd? <laughs> I was never ready. Man. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm trying to think. It, it would have been maybe six months or something like that. You know, it, six months. It, oh, it, nice. it wasn't wasn't very long, and uh, that was really uh, a setback at the beginning of my career. I really wasn't very good. Um, so you know, I, I, I have a hard time watching myself early in my career. I really don't. I don't like my costume. I don't like the way I move. I don't like the way I I, I almost do anything. So mm -hmm. over over time, uh, I, I have become good. Like the Green Phantom that you see today uh, is very, very, very different from the Green Phantom of four, five yeah. years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, twenty years ago, and so on. I, I'm a constantly evolving entity. So uh, you started your wrestling career, if my memory is good, in IWS in 2000. So can you describe us uh, your first wrestling match? Sure. Well, it was on, it was on gym mats. Uh, funny okay. enough, it wasn't, it wasn't even a real ring. We okay. tied, we tied ropes to the, to the, to the pillars supporting the ceiling. <laughs> and we just put, put some gym mats down. And, uh, from the beginning, uh, because of, you know, I'm a popular guy out of the ring. Uh, I've always had a lot of fans and, and, and fans bring an atmosphere. They bring noise. So, um, <laughs> My, my my first experience, I was I was I was very nervous for sure, but uh, I just remember a great reception. Uh, I, I always get I always get a pop when I come to the ring, and nothing's changed. It's probably got even higher these days, you know. 
Okay, uh, in May 2002, uh, you won your first IWS World Heavyweight Championship in a four-way elimination match against PCP Manny, The Arsenal, and Sexy Eddie. Can you share us your experience of uh, that victory? Sure. I spelled the, 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 the big there's a, uh, I, I hardly remember it, so you know what I have to say. I remember, yeah, I remember after um, having that belt and feeling very accomplished and bringing it back to my hometown and everyone was really proud. But I, and that was 2002, so yeah. I was still I was still very new. I, I was mm -hmm. still very green, if you, if you say. <laughs> And uh, I, I didn't. Um, it, it was it was fun for sure, but I, I don't I, I I don't think I did the belt justice. Years later, I did, but at that first shot, not so much. Uh, among these opponents, I remember that you wrestled against uh, Sabu, Nick Gage, uh, Nick Butcher, and uh, Sheamus. If my memory is good, I'm not yeah. sure, but. Which one do you think was the most uh, violent wrestler? The most violent wrestler? Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, persona-wise, it's got to be Nick Gage, you know, for Nick sure. Gage. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but actual in-ring, like, violence on me, it would have been mm -hmm. Necro Butcher for sure. Necro Butcher. Necro Butcher. He... he uh, he doesn't hold his punches. He uh, everything you see Shit. there is very, very real. Uh, he broke my nose. Really? Uh, Ouch. He was, uh, it, it, it was a tough match. It, very. You, you watch the match; it's super entertaining, but it's very physically demanding. Uh, it, it it isn't a sustainable style of wrestling, uh, in the sense that I couldn't do that every day. I'll do it once in a while because I'm a tough son of a bitch, but uh, <laughs> you, you you just can't do that often. I mean. I, I was in Japan with Necro, and that guy's yeah, in rough yeah. shape, man. He's in he's in he's in bad shape. He's in bad shape. He's in rough yeah. shape. But when he's not in the ring, you see the scars of his of his time taking crazy bumps and getting smacked in the head and whatnot. You know, um, I think uh, yeah, we're just different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we don't remember, but have you ever had a WWE tryout or AEW tryout? Uh, yeah, I was in OVW back when OVW was NXT. Okay. You know, oh, okay. Uh, my uh, my trainers, if you will, or tryout guys were Don, uh, Tom Pritchard, Danny Davis, okay. and Jim Cornette at the time. Okay. Um, it it was fun. It was a, a good learning experience, but I, I don't think at that time I really had a had a chance. Uh, it was uh, in the middle of the steroid era, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was I, that very, uh, I was with uh, like like w within my class. There was like Chris Masters, you know, mm -hmm. guys like that, okay. and like who were um, who were not very uh, like like for me, anyways. I, I, up until that point, I never I never did steroids or anything like that. So I, I came into the camp and real and I, I soon realized that my body type wasn't what they were looking for at all. Um, and, and, and Jim Cornette told me, uh, he's like, you know, you have a great character, great charisma. You could you could easily be a manager. Uh, but these days, all managers have big fake tits. Because mm -hmm. that was the, the era of, you know, Marlena. Yeah, yeah the attitude, the era uh, was very different. Yeah. Than, than so he's, he's like, if you want to make it, you have to put on a bunch of unnatural masks. And, uh, and I, I won't name names, but going back to my hotel room, uh, seeing for their tryout, a couple of dudes uh, inject pig fat into their muscles. Literally, they take the pork chop and the needle, take the pig fat out, inject it into their muscles so their muscles have an allergic reaction. They swell up and get all crazy. And then I, I realized, like you know, I, I just I'm not I'm not ready to take that these steps yet. I, I'm not not ready for this step. Um, sure. right. And then and then and then later on in in life, you know, I I, I just got older. And now I, I, I still work uh, with WWE in the sense that I get uh, I get the extra work. You know, I have my little thing on SmackDown with Ronda Rousey and whatnot. And uh, I'll probably be backstage at, at every event that comes to uh, Eastern Canada anyway, like okay. Montreal, Ottawa, Quebec City, or, or Toronto. Uh, but as far as wrestling for them, uh, I think that's, that, that has passed me by. But uh, you know what? I, it, it never really was a... 
a goal of mine because I, I just thought of it so out there. Uh, when I joined this wrestling thing, I just I seen my pants. I didn't really have a plan. Uh, and it's absolutely amazing to me uh, to where I, where I've been and where wrestling has taken me up until this point. It just it boggles my mind. Um, recently, you made an important trip to uh, Japan and uh, wrestled for the uh, Big Japan Wrestling with Nick Rubucher, uh elf member of uh, Insane Clown Posse. I'm talking about Violin J and many others. So can you tell us about your experience and how uh, you came to be recruited by the BGW? Uh, so I came to be recruited by them. One, I've been doing this for a long time, but more specifically, okay. I wrestled in uh, XPW. Um, okay. And, uh, and I wrestled this guy, Shadow WX. He's a, a Japanese uh, hardcore legend. And okay. uh, we had a good match. I made him look like a million bucks. He was super happy. And uh, the next morning at breakfast, uh, we shared the same hotel. Uh, the next morning at breakfast, he uh, asked me if I was interested in coming to Japan. And I said, no. No, of course, I said yes. I, I, was, I was very, very, <laughs> I was very, sure. very interested in going to Japan. It was always a dream come true. Mm -hmm. um, And so he, he hooked me up with somebody and talking with Madman Pondo and okay. uh, the rest was history. I, I got a work visa in the mail. I had to do some uh, paperwork and uh, before he knew it, I was there. And it was, uh, it was a dream come true. Um, it's something that if, if, if you're going to consider yourself a pro wrestler, you have to wrestle in Japan. And more than that, you have to wrestle at Cork and Hall. Uh, and both of those I did at the end of 2023. Uh, which was just fantastic. Uh, coming out in Cork and Hall, uh, I, I, the electricity, it, it, was, it was full. And yeah. uh, the electricity I felt, I was just so, I was so happy. I was so elated. I'm like, I finally made it. You know, it, was, it was amazing. And for my first match, the weirdest thing. So a bunch of years ago, about 10 years ago, I was, I was supposed to wrestle Necro Butcher in, 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 in Chicago. Okay. And my, I was in the car with Eddie. We had a car accident. We couldn't make it. I, I never wrestled <laughs> Necro Butcher since. About about two years ago, I was I was go, going to Chicago. I was on my way way to wrestle uh, Satu Jin, and then the next okay. day I was going to wrestle a, a, Akira. Okay. Uh, I got stopped at the border. They didn't let me in. I couldn't wrestle those. So, so there's oh, three no. guys. So there's three guys from uh, that I was supposed to wrestle in Chicago: mm -hmm. Akira, Satu Jin, and Necro Butcher. Necro Butcher. I get to Japan. My first night, my tag team partners, Akira, Satujin, never did this. <laughs> That's fucking weird. I don't weird, understand. But, uh, weird. The, the way the universe worked, uh, it just, it kind of told me that I was, I was really supposed to be there and it was, it was very meant to be. And Japan, um, Japan loved me. Like, I, I came in there like Godzilla, you know? Yeah. I'm bigger yeah. than everyone else. Yeah. No, I, of course. I'm, I'm, I'm louder than everyone else. I, I have a facial hair no one has. And uh, I, I just got really over with the Japanese. I, I sold all my merch. I made tons of money. They treated me like a star. Uh, it, it's it, it. I was in tears sometimes at how how well they were treating me, uh, just because sometimes, especially here in Quebec, I, 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 the French media, I, I don't get the, the the props. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll never I'll never make a top 10 list, but. But superstars in other countries and tons of fans around the world tell me different. You know, I, I, yeah. I go. It's it sucks that I have to go somewhere else to, to get the appreciation. It, it's very validating, and it, and it tells me that critics here in Quebec just don't know shit and don't mm. matter. Yeah, really, really. And uh, go ahead. Okay, yeah. For for our pre-closing segment, we'll give you a name and a few words. Tell us something about them. Uh, the first, uh, the first one uh, is uh, PCP Manny. Uh, my oldest friend in wrestling. Uh, I because he started the IWS, uh, he started Green Phantom. Mick Foley. Mick Foley, a uh, great dude, man. Um, it was one of my highlights of my life uh, going on a date with him. I brought him to the Muppets uh, when we came to when we came to Montreal, and we still talk here and there. Um, and w whenever he comes to Montreal, I, I open up for him uh, for the comedy scene, and he's just a fantastic dude. Atsushi Onita. Onita, uh, an inspiration. 
uh, the first time I saw those exploding ring matches, I knew that I, I was going to do that. And uh, what do you know, in, in, in my hometown back in 2000 and I don't know, two or something, uh, me and Manny had an exploding ring match and it was, uh, it was amazing. And the last one, Green Phantom, yourself. <laughs> uh, the hardcore hero, the Canadian table breaker, uh, beating all the odds. I don't know how I'm still going. You know, uh, it's just been uh, quite a ride getting with the green every day, every single way, baby. You know? <laughs> uh, thank you for your uh, 20 uh, minutes, uh, your generous 20 minutes. Uh, and as usual, for closing our episode, Nastrada Ben, it's all about the French prophet. Try to predict the future of our guests. Let's go. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Green Phantom. It was a uh, very a pleasure. 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 Yeah. I'm like Mr. Peak because I'm very. It's in English and not in French. Oh, peu importe. On aurait pas à faire en français, mais on sait que l'anglais c'est la langue maternelle. Donc, merci. No problem. <laughs> Okay, nothing personal, but I predict to you that uh, you're gonna lose your mask in a in a career versus mask match. Eventually, <laughs> who, 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 who's like career is that gonna be? <laughs> oh, but, uh, oh, 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 maybe I, in I, Japan. I, maybe in Japan. Maybe, maybe, in, maybe Japan. in Quebec. Maybe in Montreal. Maybe in Japan. And personally, I predict to you uh, probably a good contract with an important. Uh, wrestling promotion in Japan, probably the NGPW oh, yeah. or you deserve uh, it. Um, the Zero One, you know. Well, thank you very much. That's a that's high compliments. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, 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 I definitely ha I have an open door to go back to Japan anytime I want. Um, but for now, uh, that's not really my focus because when I went there, I kind of did everything I wanted to do in a way. I know I got my Ribera jacket. I wrestled the Cork and Hall. I had mm -hmm. good victories uh, in and out of the ring, all kinds of great stuff. So uh, it, it, isn't, it isn't right now in the immediate future. I will go back eventually, but right now okay. it, it's not a rush. But, uh, but thank you for thinking that I deserve that. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the interview. Yeah, that thank was, you so uh, much. We are very grateful that you can uh, take a moment uh, with us because we know that you are very busy. So this is very appreciated. Merci beaucoup, merci pour, pour, merci. pour, pour, pour tout votre intérêt. Super. Au revoir. Merci.